Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills, a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. This is episode 13, Buying Materials. If you like this content, please consider subscribing on Patreon. There's a link down there in the description. Okay, let's dive in. So you've watched all these YouTube videos on machining and you've bought yourself your first lathe and you're super excited to dive into this new hobby of machining. And uh, at some point, disturbingly late in that process, you realize you need materials. And you think to yourself, self, how do you buy metal? Where do you buy metal? What kinds of metal are there? I've never done any of this before. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, it sounds silly, but this is one of those things that uh, I think a lot of experts don't realize that beginners don't know is how to buy metal and what kinds you should get. So let's talk about that right now. So you set out to buy steel, you think, well, I'll just go onto one of those online metal merchants that I've seen and oh my God, what have I gotten into? What are all these? Yeah. Turns out there are a million kinds of steel uh, for a million different applications. But the good news is, as a hobbyist machinist, there's only a couple you really need to know about. So for our purposes, we'll break steel down into three different categories. Cold rolled, hot rolled, and mystery. For machining purposes, uh, cold rolled is generally your friend. Uh, hot rolled steel, uh, you can always tell it has this characteristic uh, crusty orange peel uh, scale on it, and this is mill scale, and it's a byproduct of the manufacturing process of this. Uh, this stuff is great for, you know, uh, construction and fabrication types of things. Uh, it's great for welding, uh, but for, uh, for machining purposes, cold rolled is generally a little more pleasant to work with. Now within cold rolled, there are also many, many types of categories, uh, carbon levels, alloys, etc. Uh, but I think the hobbyist really only needs to worry about two. Uh, the first is your basic mild steel, which is uh, uh, 1018. And uh, this stuff is very plentiful. You can find it anywhere. Uh, it's a, it's, it takes a little more uh, experience to machine it well, uh, but uh, it can be welded also, which is very nice. So for mixed, you know, medium projects, uh, it's great. It's inexpensive, ubiquitous. Uh, if you're doing strictly machining, uh, this is 12L14 steel. Sometimes they call it leadloy or has other trade names, but uh, it has a very small amount of lead in it that uh, makes it machine very, very nicely. So uh, I think uh, this stuff is really, really great, especially when you're learning. This stuff is very forgiving. Uh, it's easy to get good surface finishes with it, and it's going to build your confidence. So uh, I definitely recommend if you're going to get into steel, starting with 12L14. The only real disadvantage to this stuff uh, is that uh, it, it's very difficult to weld it. Uh, any, anytime they put additives in steel to make it easier to machine, uh, those impurities inevitably make it harder to weld. So, uh, but for machining parts, this stuff is great. And lastly, I want to call out mystery steel because you're going to find this stuff everywhere. I think this is a chunk I found in my garden. And it's going to be very tempting when you first get started in machining to grab this stuff uh, anywhere you find it and, uh, you know, use it for projects. The problem is uh, you have no idea what this stuff is. Uh, the grade of it, the carbon level, the impurities or additives that might be in it, all of that affects how well it machines and what your speeds and feeds should be and all that. So. Uh, yeah, this kind of mystery steel of unknown origin is going to be of pretty limited use and especially as a beginner I would avoid this stuff uh, because it's adding a, a whole category of variables to uh, trying to get better at machining. You know, if you buy from, from the store fresh 12L14 steel, you know what you've got and that's, you know, a variable, one variable eliminated. So now you can just focus on, you know, acquiring the other skills that you need. So uh, as tempting as uh, free mystery metal is, uh, I would avoid it. Uh, and to that end, you know, keep your scraps and your spares uh, categorized so that you know what they are. Uh, it can be hard to tell by looking if one is 12 or 14 and one's 10, 18 and whatever. So, uh, you know, keep your scrap box sorted. Now, the second very common hobbyist choice is aluminum. Uh, and like steel, this stuff comes in a million flavors. The good news is, though, that uh, aluminum is pretty simple for the hobbyist. Really, 6061, uh, the basic aluminum is really all you have to care about. Uh, this stuff machines great, uh, and uh, you know it's easy to get good results with. It's cheap, easy to get, comes in all sorts of dimensions. So, with aluminum, 6061. Uh, the only real downside to this stuff is while it, it uh, mills really great on the lathe, it's very hard to get chips to break. So you tend to tend to end up with long rat's nests on the lathe and. Even experienced machinists uh, will struggle with that a little bit, uh, but that's just something you live with with aluminum on the lathe. Another great option for getting started for hobbyists is brass. Uh, brass is very forgiving to machine, uh, and the tool geometry used with it is very simple, so uh, it's easy to grind tools for brass. 
So uh, I think it's a really great choice. Now brass comes in uh, also many flavors, just like the other metals, uh, but really the only one you need to know about is 360 free machining brass. Uh, sometimes it's called C3600 or whatever, but it's always three six and some zeros. Uh, but yeah, 360 free machining brass uh, is a really strong choice. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other materials, uh, but uh, I think it's very, very pleasant to work with and, and really worth your time. Uh, it's also easy to get in uh, lots of shapes. So this is hex bar, and this is really convenient if you're making fasteners or plumbing fittings, things like that, to already have that hex uh, form right in there for you. Now back here behind the brass, uh, we have bronze, and uh, this is also sometimes called red brass. Uh, once again, it comes in a million alloys, but for uh, hobbyists, I think the only one you really need to worry about is uh, 932, uh, sometimes called bearing bronze. And uh, this is this stuff's pretty pretty exotic as hobbyist materials go, and it's expensive. Uh, you can tell uh, bronze because it has this kind of uh, purple striped appearance to it. Uh, but uh, the main thing you're going to use this for is like uh, bearings, uh, bushings, you know, spinning shafts, things like that uh, that need a, a, an oiled surface to run in. Uh, it's used a lot in uh, hobby steam work, so uh, it's also a great choice for boiler bushings, valves, things that are going to be in contact with uh, hot steam uh, because it doesn't suffer from uh, desingification like brass does. Brass can get brittle uh, with prolonged contact with steam uh, because it can lose the, uh, the zinc. An interesting thing about bronze is because it is so commonly used for bearings and bushings and because it's expensive, uh, you can often find it in hollow round bar. Uh, you know, all metals you pay for by the atom, so there's no point in paying for atoms that you're just going to uh, throw into the chip tray. So uh, by buying hollow stock, uh, you're, you're minimizing the amount of machining that you need to do and the amount of material that you're paying for. One last pro tip with bronze, uh, again, because it's expensive, don't pay for any atoms that you don't need. Uh, often the cheapest way to get uh, bronze stock is the plumbing aisle uh, at the hardware store. You can buy, you know, if you can buy a fitting like this that is uh, larger than the part that you're trying to make, if you can machine away anything that isn't necessary here and get to a part inside there that you need, uh, this stuff is actually uh, quite cheap and it's usually pretty decent quality bronze. Usually the castings are really terrible, as you can see on this guy. Uh, this is, you know, very inexpensive sand casting. Uh, but once you machine it down, uh, it doesn't matter. So think about the plumbing aisle if you need bronze. Now, speaking of steam engines, if you're into that type of hobby, uh, you're going to encounter cast iron a lot. Uh, it's typically found uh, uh, in casting kits. Uh, it's not something you typically buy as bar stock so often. Uh, in fact, the only sample of it I could find was uh, this broken half nut from my lathe. But um, yeah, if, if you're doing those types of models, you're going to encounter it. Cast iron is, is great to machine various types of, of cast iron as well. But uh, there's, you know, there's ductile and gray and different types. But it's not something that uh, if you're just working with bar stock, you're going to be likely to encounter. And if you're making a model kit, uh, the cast iron is supplied, so you don't really have to worry about the types of it or how to buy it so much. Okay, getting a little more exotic now, uh, this is copper, and most people's casual experience with copper is just going to be through, you know, water pipe that you buy at the hardware store. Uh, but uh, you can actually buy copper in uh, any dimension bar stock that you might need, just like any other material. So uh, the catch with copper is that it is crazy expensive. If you've ever wondered why people break into houses to rip the wiring out of the walls, it's this stuff it is super, super expensive. So uh, I don't work with it a lot, both because of the cost uh, and because it actually is quite challenging to machine. Uh, it's very soft and gummy like aluminum, but it doesn't have a lot of structure to it, so it can't, uh, it doesn't break chips and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't machine very well, but uh, you can do it. Uh, and if you're into model making and steam engines, again, you're going to be working with the stuff a lot for boilers and such, but um, yeah. Copper is another option. And of course, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about tool steel. Uh, this is probably the most exotic steel that the hobbyist is going to encounter. You're most likely going to encounter it in the form of drill rod, which are these precision ground pieces of round bar. And what's great about this stuff is that uh, it's, it's precisely dimensioned. So if you buy quarter inch drill rod, for example, it's either going to be exactly 250 thou uh, in diameter, uh, or it may be 251 or 249, depending on uh, the brand. Some of it's uh, intentionally 1 thou over or under. Uh, but uh, yeah, drill rod is nice because it's precisely dimensioned. You can use it directly for you know making alignment pins or shafts uh, or things like that. And tool steel, of course, can be bought uh, in any form as well, not just uh, drill rod. You can buy it in bar stock and, and plenty of other forms. Uh, this stuff is uh, quite a bit more expensive than normal steel. Uh, 
Uh, it's also harder to come by. So for example, my local steel supplier doesn't carry tool steel because it's not used in construction or you know, uh, fabrication where you know, most of the steel market is. So uh, if I want to buy this stuff locally, I have to go uh, quite far afield to uh, a specialty tool steel supplier. Uh, so this stuff I buy online. And one of the, one of the main raisons d'etre of tool steel is that it can be uh, heat treated. So uh, this is a, a slug of tool steel that uh, has been hardened and then tempered with a torch. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about uh, heat treating in another video, but know that uh, tool steel uh, can be hardened and tempered, and that's why it's useful for making uh, tools. So while tool steel's superpower is that it can be heat treated, uh, it's also actually just really tough on its own. So it's still useful uh, without heat treating for uh, shafts and, and things where you, uh, you need some extra strength. Uh, and because of that, it can be a little bit challenging to uh, machine on smaller uh, hobbyist machines. So you're gonna, want, gonna need to minimize tool pressure and make sure your, your rigidity is really, uh, really on fleek there. And the last uh, fun material I wanna talk about are machining plastics. Uh, again, there are a million kinds of these, but uh, if you have to pick one to know about, uh, I'd go with Delrin. Uh, this is also called acetyl. Uh, Delrin is a trade name for it. Uh, and it's uh, a plastic designed for machining. Uh, it's, it's very strong and stable and it machines very well. It does make long stringy chips on the lathe, uh, but other than that, it, uh, it machines really nicely. And uh, this stuff is great for uh, making oil-free bearings uh, or if you need quiet rollers for machinery, things like that. Uh, this stuff has all sorts of uses, so don't forget about uh, plastics. And uh, my go-to is Delrin, uh, and this stuff's easy to buy as well. A uh, quick mention of a couple materials that I didn't have on hand to demonstrate that uh, you might be interested in. Uh, the first is stainless. Uh, stainless steel uh, is a bit of a dark art machining wise and you'll find lots and lots of disagreement online about which ones are best but uh, the general consensus seems to be that uh, 303 or 316 stainless are the easiest to machine so uh, whichever one of those uh, you can e most easily get your hands on I would uh, go with that. And uh, lastly is uh, chromoly steel. Uh, there are varying degrees of that, but uh, the most common you'll find is 4140. And uh, that's great when you need something really strong, like if you're making uh, bolts for you know, automotive applications or uh, you know, uh, shafts for machines, things like that that need to be very strong. And something else you might encounter uh, is called stress-proof uh, steel, which is uh, a trade name for uh, a grade of steel called 1144. And uh, this is a type of cold rolled steel that's uh, treated uh, to uh, relieve the internal stresses in the material. And uh, what that does is make it less prone to, to warping and also stronger. So uh, it's commonly used uh, in gear shafts, uh, pinions, uh, piston rods, uh, you know, things like that where you need a little more strength. Uh, it's also very free machining. Uh, it's nice stuff to work with. Okay, so let's talk about how to actually buy materials. Uh, the first place I always recommend uh, people look is locally. You might be surprised what material suppliers are around you if you've never checked. And of course, the nice thing about buying locally is that uh, you get it immediately and you can see what you're getting. You've got a real human you can talk to who can make recommendations. Uh, downside uh, might be that often these places want to sell you a lot of material. So uh, the minimum order might be 10 or 20 feet uh, of round bar or something, which might be uh, far more than you need. Uh, but they will also often deliver and they will often make cuts for you for, for inexpensive or free. So uh, definitely check what's around you. And uh, the other nice thing about these places is that they often have an off cuts area, which uh, can be a gold mine of random little bits of stuff. And uh, you know, these, these are a crap shoot. Sometimes there's amazing stuff, sometimes there's nothing, but uh, yeah, any good supplier is going to have an off cuts area and uh, that might be your first stop. And hey, real talk here for a second. Uh, these places can be intimidating. They're, you know, it's probably in an industrial part of town that you never have been to. And, uh, you know, you're going to walk into a very serious looking building that has very serious looking people in it who want to talk very seriously about serious steel. Uh, and you're just a hobbyist who wants to buy a little bit of round bar to play, play with on the lathe. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you know what you need, you want 12L14 or 1018 or whatever, just walk up to the counter and ask for it and, and they'll help you out. And if uh, they're not friendly to you because you're a hobbyist and you're not building a skyscraper, uh, then just go somewhere else. There's uh, plenty of other places to go. Now, if you don't have something locally or if the material you want uh, isn't there, then uh, the next stop uh, for me is always eBay. And I think this surprises people because they assume that uh, the shipping would be cost prohibitive on metal. But uh, in fact, at least in the United States, uh, the USPS flat rate shipping boxes have completely transformed online metal sales. And uh, you know, you go on eBay and for example, this is a, a simple search for, for brass round bar and you can find 
all sorts of different sizes and little packages of, of dimensions and lengths, uh, lots of good stuff. In fact, I'll call out uh, Stoner Tools and uh, Raw Materials here, uh, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, he's my go-to for uh, uh, lots and lots of stuff. He's great. Shipping is fast and free, and uh, uh, this is just perfect for hobbyists because you just need a little bit of something and uh, maybe a weird dimension, and you don't want to buy 20 feet of it. Uh, this, is, this is my go-to. Now, if you can't find what you need on eBay, the next good option online is places like uh, Online Metals uh, or Metal Supermarkets, hashtag not sponsored. Uh, they are going to have a much better selection. Of course, it's going to be a little more uh, expensive, but uh, you know, when you when you need something more exotic, stainless or copper uh, or plastics, you know, these guys are, are definitely going to have it. And they're also going to deal in short lengths. Uh, these places also often have kind of a virtual offcuts area. You can buy packages of like random lengths of materials and it'll be cheaper. Uh, so those are a great option. And one more place I think people don't often think of for material is McMaster Car. You know, we all go here for our pulleys and our fasteners and whatever, but uh, they have a great selection of unusual materials as well, and they offer short lengths. So if you need a, a foot of cast iron, you know, square bar, uh, McMaster Car can hook you up. And uh, they also have some of the more unusual machining plastics and uh, lots of other cool stuff. So don't forget about McMaster Car. Hashtag not sponsored. And that's it for how to buy metals. I hope you found this useful, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.